Okay. Well, welcome you all. Those of you who are over 50 and everyone else who is interested to know more about the wise generation. So this special online conversation is hosted by Moving to the Future and the Wise Move Society, the online community for the over 50 generation. So this generation is growing by the day. We're living longer, are longer, healthy and active and are better educated than ever. So we just need to step in that knowledge, that experience and wisdom. With these Tuesday live conversations, we aim to give you a glimpse of what is happening online on the Wise Moves Society, to share a bit about both the challenges and the opportunities that the 50 plus generation is facing, as well as how the members of the Wise Moves Society work together to create the solutions and play an active role in society and in the economy. So the wise generation is very clear that we're not on our way out, but that we're part of the future. So for those who join us on Zoom, we love you to contribute to the conversation. And if you've joined us on Facebook, please share your feedback and questions in the comments. So my name is Ingun Bol. I'm the founder of Move Into The Future and the creator of the Wise Move Society. And I'm here today with my co-host, Dr. Tatjana Rosen, and our guest, Nienke van Bezoje from the Netherlands. Nienke is a communication and presentation master, TEDx speaker coach, and on top of that, she's one of my wise move thought leaders. Together, we're going to ask ourselves how to speak up as the real you. So before we do that, I would like to give my co-host, Tatjana, the floor so she can share a bit more about her background and she will pass on the stage to Nienke. So Tatjana, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I'm Tatjana Rosen. I'm a psychologist. I'm an academic and researcher researching midlife and beyond and how to age well in the multi-generational workforce. And uh, we were talking a bit offline about speaking up and, and finding our voices and how to bring that out. And I think at that stage of life, in a way, it's, it's, it's now or never. If you don't bring that out now and live life to the full, I'm not sure when we're going to do that. So I will uh, not say any more than that. I was just going to save the conversation for Nink to bring and start sharing her wisdom with us. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you both. Thank you both. Really pleasure to be here and uh, well, to have a conversation of what's possible. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing. So shall I just just yeah. share a bit about myself? Because uh, for the ones who don't know me, it might be <laughs> of an interest. So uh, I'm Nien Kampusoy from the Netherlands, as Inkun said. And um, I recently moved to a place which you see here behind me. And at the age of nearly uh, 55, which I will turn on Friday, it's yeah. really a, um, a new start. So uh, it turned out end of relationship, new space, new town, new house, new life. How awesome is that? And it hasn't been always the case like this. So th this is a short introduction where I'm now, but um, I grew up in a family with an older brother, very, very um, bright, bright mind, Asperger syndrome. And um, my mom is handicapped since she was four years old so I don't know anything different so when I was uh, a younger child it was rewarding to look after my mom so when I had to make a real choice what to do for next education I became a nurse because it was rewarding to look after someone else was that my real passion well probably not that turned out later um I, I really moved on, um, had a, a great career in, in nursing, uh, did um, management uh, on the top level in, 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 in healthcare, elderly care, psychiatric care, um, all kinds of, of areas. And at a certain point, I realized on my way to my work, I was yawning all the time. 
yawning, yawning. And it was nearly an hour drive, four days a week. And I was yawning and I was pondering why. Well, when I ended up in a conflict with my boss, I knew why <laughs> it wasn't my destination to stay in healthcare and be off my path of what I really, um, what, what gave me energy. Um, so I became an entrepreneur so I could design my own life. I was at the age of 39 or something when I flipped everything around, became an entrepreneur. Um, what I'm doing now as a presentation master, uh, helping in the presentation and communication skills, it's my third company. So, oh, well, now I'm a serial entrepreneur, whatever label you name it, I don't mind. But what I do now is giving voice to what matters. Um, I developed my own professional speaker method um, and I just help people to get their voice out. And what I noticed over the years is a difference in how my colleagues or my clients express themselves in a different age stage. And what I noticed when they reached an over 50, it could happen two, in two directions. It's either they try to stay young and use the language they used for years and everybody could smell for miles away that it was authentic. And they became hesitant to share their wisdom or they became really keen on sharing their wisdom all the time, uh, what makes all the people around them bored because they always know better. And I don't think that's the, the right approach to connect with people. So yes, I just love to create clarity with my clients and people in all kinds of areas, because um, whether it's this wise move society, move into the future, whether it is peace building work, what I do quite a lot, whether it's hard math or hard mastery, speaking from the heart, it all comes to the same. Who are you authentically? And what do you get out verbally, but also in the body language that it is aligned as a real you of who you are now? So here I am. And I just love to dive into this topic together with you and, and just answer questions and just be with me. Yes, uh, thank you, Nienke, for this. Uh, and you already touched some issues that I thought, oh, wow, that's interesting. Uh, uh, I love what you say, give a voice to what matters. And uh, I think that is, you know, that is, that is one thing, you know, that we do something that matters. Um, but also that authenticity, that is so important. So you have to know what you feel is important and that you know what matters to you, you know, that uh, it can be different from, uh, from something else. But, um, but anyhow, so, um, so if you talk to, to, if you talk as a, as a presentation master or TEDx coach or communication expert, uh, it is very important that before you do anything with someone, um, is that they really find who they are, that they discover who they really are. And, you, well, of course, we can talk about purpose and ikigai or however we're going to call it. But that, of course, is, is so important. And um, uh, especially, especially also, I think, with this older age group, because I do believe, and, and I love to hear the other perspectives, I do believe that when we were younger in our 20s, you know, the first steps in our career, that was not something that was asked a lot. So what do you want out of life? What is your purpose? I was like, you know, get a job, earn money, buy a house, things like that. That was important. Kids, the younger generation now is much more aware of what they really want out of life and, and willing to take the steps. So, so working on diving really deep in, in who you really are uh, is very much needed for this age group. I, I got a real good 
um, angle for that from one of my mentors and by now friends, because, you know, at a certain point you have a role model and then um, they become friends if you if you connect with them. And this person is Dr. Silla Awardy. She was nominated three times for the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, she's quite active at her age, she's 78 now, um, particularly nowadays. And she always asked everybody, no matter what age, what breaks your heart? What breaks your heart? What breaks your heart? And it doesn't matter if that's your job or or even company. What, what breaks your heart? So if you stay quiet and you say, oh, I can't stand da 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 da, that's what breaks your heart. Um, and then she combines it straight away with what's your talent? So this can be connecting with people, um, giving presentations, um, building a movement, uh, doesn't matter. I know are, are you know are really good at at precise work or designing something or whatever. It doesn't matter. The, the talent is what fuels you up in a positive way. So what breaks your heart? What's your talent? If you melt them together, then you step up in an authentic way. And it doesn't need to be your job or what you get paid for, but at least it helps you to stay aligned and not burn out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i see what you mean this is really heartfelt you know what breaks your heart and especially in a time like this you know with the things happening in eastern europe you know with with, uh, with anyhow um it's uh that breaks my heart but you know on the other hand it's what what are your talents what can you do it's it's too big that i, I think but i i do understand yeah i see you <laughs> but for for me now it's too big um but i do understand that that's normally we ask it from from inside out what is it that you love doing you know what's what's makes you tick you know what gets you out in the morning but to ask it the other way around it's is uh, yeah that's that's well oh. that needs the, the experience as well because you can ask a five or six year old what breaks your heart and they come up with an answer for sure but if you ask it our age um it, it comes with what happened in your life and you can integrate that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um yeah, it's she, <clears throat> Dr. Silla Worthy also uh, mm -hmm. developed the the mighty heart, uh, where she speaks and, and merges them. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, she's a great speaker. I think she had one point four million views on her TED talk. So, I, wow. and I I didn't coach her by the way. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe the second one. <laughs> and she it's just fine. just just Google her and and Mary Jane uh, added some uh, where you can find her uh, speaking next. Yeah. Um, it helps to to stay aligned with who you are, mm -hmm. and and keep your authenticity, yeah. because that's that's what we were searching for. Absolutely, absolutely. I love that. Yes, Tatiana. How about you? Oh, I, I have to say that those questions are so powerful Ning, to, to start thinking about these things. And I have to say for me, straight, I, I know the answer of them. I, and I do know what breaks my heart. Exclusion breaks my heart is something that is really drives what I do in many different life domains is, is making sure people are not excluded. Um, and it's 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 interesting because when you find that, I should imagine it's much easier to find that voice because it just comes out. So it, we can't hold it back. What is important to us morally? Exactly. Uh, it, it it is very close to the idea of purpose, isn't it? The idea of yeah yeah um. And still, it's this this um, purpose you can like like England says you can do your ikigai and of course, but that's sometimes more an approach from the head. Mm -hmm. And what breaks your heart? Um, often I can see people getting sitting straight. Well, what, and, and then it 
comes out. Um, it's it's very rare in, in, in the people I work with that I when I ask them what breaks your heart, they say, well, what really matters to me is no, what really matters it comes from within mm -hmm. and from the heart and, and from the heart you speak out often. I think I have a question for you because it's something that I always think about and I think about in my own journey of becoming a lecturer and a speaker and so on. It, this idea of maybe how I speak or how I express myself is not powerful enough, or maybe I'm quieter or more introverted. How do you work with people like that, that they have something to say, but they might lack that view of themselves in, in a world that's so loud and noisy around us to, to bring that voice out? Well, the first um, thing people get mixed up is speaking up, you should be a speaker. Uh, 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 uh. It's expression. So not everybody is designed to become a public speaker and enjoys it. If, if you really don't like to be in bigger crowds, if you really don't like to have the spotlight on you and to, to express yourself, it's not necessarily something you should do you know? um, But if you are in a team or with your family or your spouse, it's quite handy so people understand um, what matters to you and, and what is near and dear to you. And then speaking um, doesn't become a, a, a really high to reach point. It, then it becomes communication. And when I ask my people um, if I have a bigger group and I just, just ask the question, um, do you ever have to give a presentation? Just raise your, by raise your hand. And well, some of them raise their hand and you present yourself always. Like I'm presenting myself here, but I feel very comfortable and it's not public speaking or whatever to me. This is connection. And then it's, it's way easier to, to speak more freely um, and you have, on the other side, you have to get to know yourself, um, to have your, your own worthiness ready to be okay with you. Because if you feel unworthy, um, it's harder to express your truth and give voice to that. So that's what I love, just to, to be curious about the real people when I meet them for the first time. Who are you and, and what matters to you? Uh, what's your interest? Um, and how can I bridge that with you to the world? And then it becomes less big and broad and sometimes scary. So that's the difference, Tatiana. Does it answer your question? No, it, you did. And I thought that this is a really nice way to put it. That's expression, it's not become a public speaker. And I mm. think that really opens the avenues for people to actually consider expressing themselves yeah. and, and not missing, yeah. missing the chance to do that. Yeah, I just want to add one more thing to Chana is um, if what you have to offer to the world or who you are, if you see that as a little present, you know, what you can share with the world, speaking up and expressing yourself is just giving that presence to the world. So is it scary to, to give someone a present? Well, the scariest thing is that you don't know if the other person might like what you want to give. Okay, does that really matter in your desire to give something from yourself to another? Um, most of the time not. So just expressing yourself and sharing who you are is to me not really different from just giving a present because there's always someone who can pick up something no matter what from you so for the people who watch this recording or are on this call together with us if you have something what what well lights you up you know mission accomplished. I'm not there to, to, to preach and teach anything. I'm there to connect with you. And that's the most important thing, like a present. 
that's what I wanted to add. It's sure. I, I thank you for this addition. What what there's another thought that connected to that in my mind. So I'm going to throw out there in the conversation, and I'm happy for for you to disagree. But once someone really wise said, when you give those things, your wisdom or a bit of yourself, you have to be prepared for the other side not to want it and not to take that as a rejection from the world, but it's, it's fair enough. They, they, they might want that gift or they might not want that gift. That doesn't diminish the act mm -hmm. of giving. And we're not eating all the same meals either, isn't it? So we don't like everything in the same way. So not everything we share with the world will be liked by everyone. That's fine. It doesn't diminish you. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. I can see we have a Mary Jane come in. Yeah, yeah. I just I have to jump in because Ninka, what you shared just so resonates with me. Um, I think you know our backgrounds are somewhat similar. That we started out in nursing careers and and then you know I. I jumped into the corporate world for a little bit of time, a couple of years, and then have been independent ever since. So for three plus decades, uh, together with my husband uh, as independent consultants. And then, you know, it took, it took something for me to, you know, some health issues to really confront. I was not being true to myself in all that time. You know, this was something that really didn't, um, wasn't coming from my heart. And when I stopped, uh, kind of forced to stop and really reevaluate at 50, the age of 52, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it didn't come to me suddenly. But over the course of a couple of years, I started to realize the gift that I had, the knowledge that I had accrued, that I could give this back and that there, there was a real need for it. And um, this, this is something that, that really also changed the way I looked at public speaking, totally changed it. I mean, I was terrified of public speaking. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that I wanted to go beyond one-on-one -on -one coaching, that I wanted to reach groups with what I had to share, I thought, I have to learn how to do this. But it, what amazed me was after the first time, even though I was scared out of my wits, um, the fact that it resonated with people um, and I really felt that there was something that I had to share. So that connection that you speak about uh, and that wanting to give back to others, that really made a difference for me in how I perceived speaking in public. So I, I just had to share that because so yeah, much- and, and thank you for that because um, yes, I've, I've, uh, I joined the Club of Health Issues to get where you really want to be. Uh, and I know in, in, in this group, we're, we're not the only ones, because uh, once I heard the metaphor of if you have a farmer who plows and makes the, the lines to seed for the crops to, to grow, if you're out of line of what, what the plow is doing and you walk the heaps of sand instead of just in the path mm -hmm. where the seeds are expected uh, to grow, um, you get really tired. So if you walk off your path, what you feel from within, mm. it's it's so easy to burn out. But that's uh, that's a total different topic. But um, it's it's so easy to to stay off track because you are trying to even verbally, if we do it in speaking verbally, to to meet expectations of the past. Mm -hmm. You mm. are who you are today. You're not your past. So. It's, it's good to be aware of and to reflect on that is, is what I'm saying, how I'm presenting myself, how I am connecting the same as I, I, I did when I was 33, when I'm 50 plus. You know, it's, it's good to be aware um, and stay healthy because you're, yeah. if you're off track, you get really tired. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, body, the body eventually will say no. Mm -hmm. in some way shape or form yeah yep yeah yeah and <clears throat> uh, the good thing is i experienced myself by stepping into my real path i ever overcame a lot of health issues too so it's always hope isn't it mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. De Jong, de, thank you, Nienke en uh, Mary Jane. Uh, uh, de Jong, is there anything that you want to add to this conversation? Thank you. Uh, yes, I was very interested. And, and oh. when you talk about what breaks your heart, that really, we, we talk about um, gut feel quite often. Uh, and, and how does it feel in your gut? But how do you see the difference between that and the heart? I, I could really feel it. Um, when you were talking about it? Well, um, I, I'm a heart math trainer as well. And uh, from that perspective, um, I, I have a very interesting uh, thing what was mentioned to me in my education is that your heart intelligence, your heart brain, as even in your embryo stage was developed before your brain. So your heart, your heart knows first. And when you really get into an emotional level around it, it's not very often the heart, but the gut. Because the gut is, is really um, influenced by a lot of hormones and the heart less in, in a different way. So if you speak from the gut, it can be quite emotional. Um, and it's further away from the brain to correct if you're off track. If you speak from the heart, it's somewhere in the middle. Hmm. to make it simple thank you for that that was really really good and again you know it really does i can i can feel it you know something that's very close to me at the moment just before i joined this just slightly later because there was something else that i needed to address and uh it's really speaking to me so thank you for that and what you were talking about that little that present as well giving something uh, I can really resonate with that as well. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. And if you speak and you use gestures, you can, if you connect with someone, use that gesture of, of giving mm -hmm. or embracing. Um, because your body language helps you how you speak on verbally to connect with that. And even on Zoom, um, we have so many Zoom meetings nowadays. Um, you see me making gestures, but if I do it below my camera, I, you can still feel in my voice there is a difference. Um, if you do a public speaking kind of thing on Zoom, you get this bird flapping around. If you do it like this, uh, particularly with a fake background, it's really weird. But mm -hmm. um, it's it's just be aware, just make your gestures and, and do connect. With an audience, it's even easier. Thank you, Diane, for bringing that up. Thank you. Very interesting. Yes, De, De Jong, I saw that you also wanted to dive in. Yeah. Please do. Yes. <laughs> wow, I, I'm very, very happy uh, to see Nienke <laughs> here. Uh, yes, and I was reflecting what I learned uh, from Lienka, um, you know, several months ago, and uh, and I I I really um, um, feel how how valuable um, the time that we spent together um, over the past several months, and now I was thinking about like uh, uh, with your question, what broke my heart. Yes, um, the same question. And now I, uh, I uh, to me, the sentence is like, I am worthy. I am worthy. And yes, you are worthy. So what's the point? Because when we ask to someone else, uh, do you feel you are worthy? They would say, no, <laughs> I'm not enough. So <laughs> what broke my heart, what breaks my heart is um, telling I am worthy. And um uh, as Nienke said, um, I do what I love. So um, I want to share what I feel, um, what is important. So I do provide lots of, you know, um, Instagram images to the public and I can see so many people uh, like that. So I feel so um, happy about that. And my message is you are worthy, you matter. So you are valuable that message so uh i i, I am very very grateful for this space mm -hmm. thank you uh ingan and yenke thank you Dayong. and 
what I so much appreciate about you, because we know each other for several years now, and we've met in all different groups and um, uh, just the way that you don't stop stepping up. Mm-hmm. Although you don't know how, you keep stepping up. You don't take a no for an answer, not for yourself, nor for others, nor for your cultural aspects, nor for a global aspect. So thank you for speaking up who you are, because um, you're a great example. What's possible if you just do um, follow your heart and speak up about it and you are able to touch so many people around it. So globally. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Wonderful, wonderful connection. And that is the really fantastic. Ninka, I really want to, to paint that picture of this, this, this 50 plus. Someone who has worked for quite some years for a certain company, you know, really done all the things that, that they should be doing and or thought that they should be doing. Uh, ends up on this in this phase in their life that they feel, you know, I need to change something, I need to reinvent myself and really want to find my purpose or my ikigai and really want to bring something into the world, um, but are not yours to to express that, you know, there was always living in this very structured organization. And now, especially if they want to speak up on something that is close to their heart or um, as you mentioned that that's you know well anyhow it's it is it is sometimes scary it is something they're not used to and um, for instance I'm now uh, coaching someone here the uh, she is in her 70s um, is fed up with retirement really wants to start something new and um, has been thinking about it, you know, really now structuring her pitch. Um, But, you know, it's not only about your message. It is about who you are. It is about how real you are. It is about how authentic you are. It is about your posture. It is about the words you use. But, and that is something that I always feel very, very um, passionate about is, you know, there is no perfect. Just go and do it. You Thank know, God, go there is no there. perfect. There is no, you know, <laughs> just go out there and, and speak from your heart. And you cannot say anything ju- wrong. You don't have to learn your pitch by heart. You know, it's, it is something that, you know, someone who is really passionate about a certain topic, you know, that that is a magnet for people. It is not how well and how, you know, what you're wearing or what you're, it all adds up, of course, to the message, but it is, and I think especially the way we're now, we're with all our knowledge, with all our experience and wisdom, just do it, come on, go out there and change the world. That's, well, that's what I always feel like, the very passionate. Yeah. Love to hear you. Um, uh, I totally agree. Just, just, Get on your feet and and do it. And I would suggest to to the person you spoke about, you know, in her seventies or in sixties, um, really want to step up for what matters to her. Okay, great. When it's scary, um, the one uh, advice or, or thing I, I would highly recommend is feel your feet first. Because before you know, you start speaking, like, oh, I want to do something. And then you're all out there and you lose contact with your feet. And ungrounded people are often not that well received by their audience. So stand on two feet. And if you forget it, wiggle your toes. What? Wiggle your toes. Not feet, don't flap around. Just wiggle your toes because that keeps your mind to the most far point in your body so you are connected with your whole body. Simple tool, wiggle your toes, got it from my voice coach uh, when I started. Um, Credits to Deborah Torres Patel, by the way. Okay, wiggle your toes, ground first, otherwise you lose yourself, you fly away. Don't, because people don't 
in your audience don't like flyaway people. They might be carried away with you, but they don't remember you very well. So um, secondly, it's to understand your audiences because not every audience is the same. So for example, if I'm uh, giving a guest lecture at a technical university with all 20 bits um, boys, highly uh, connected to their brain, I mustn't come with, um, oh, how do you feel? They want facts, figures, and proof that I'm right. That's all. So I adjust my language slightly without losing my authenticity. But I understand my audience isn't about, um, for example, a group of enthusiastic uh, senior nurses who really want to get the things done. They roll up their sleeves, they go on. Um, but what I would suggest for your, your client is get your topic clear first. What are you speaking about and why? Because if people understand your why you're passionate about or you're passionate about, then it's so easy to connect with you. And what most people forget is to give a perspective how it is how to collaborate with you because you can be sending out a message but then you can use a youtube tutorial as well that's not really an interconnected thing but if you really want to be with someone and be connected give them a future perspective uh, and the ones who desire a future perspective you can recognize if you've ever been in front of a group they always raise a question early and says yes but what if hmm? I call them the what if us, but you have to engage them to keep them along and have them on the same page with you. So if you know your audience and you can just adjust what you say, um, I love to work with people around that. So if people are more interested, more happy to do so. And I can even give something here in this to this audience, but um, to dive deeper, um, uh, well, just contact us. <laughs> but it helps to understand your audience, how they, they digest your information. And then it then comes easy to be with them and to have them on your page and collaborate and walk together. So that's what I do. Yes, beautiful. Yeah. And um, uh, Tatiana, I would like to involve you. Is um, you know, you're working with a lot of different groups and a lot of age groups. And one of the things that Ninka also mentioned in the beginning, um, well, you know, the, about, you know, the different age groups and, you know, don't try to speak their language or... or uh, you well, know, if you try to be really fitting in, in another great group that it's not your age group, that might yeah. sound very weird. Is that what you mean? It might sound weird, yes, but on the other, other hand, if you don't try to understand at least what they're saying. That's different. That's listening. They use this. They that's use li this. That's, that's listening, listening is very important, but copy their words as, as oh, you will be one of the guys and girls. That, that's the mismatch. Understand them. You might use some words and then even be authentic if, if you really feel them as yours. Um, but if you talk like them and don't listen and adjust to the real you, then you get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay. In yeah. my experience. Yeah. But Tatiana. <laughs> I, I think this is, is interesting. Thank you. Thank you for that, Nink, as, a, as well. Because one of the mistakes we see when organizations, when people are trying to bridge this gap or generations is trying to mimic them yeah. or trying to mimic the way that they would approach things or information. And that is something that end up exacerbating these stereotypes. I, I often talk about stereotypes and stereotypical, um, the, the way that we relate to each other. And, uh, and bridging this gap, I, I, I can see how being authentic and, and comfortable in your own shoes. So if you're comfortable, this is who I am and this is my language, whether it's, it's old fashioned or modern and, and whatever. And if that is true to what I'm saying, then doesn't matter. 
but we always find this gap of how generations try to connect that is not from the message, but is from this stereotypical view of, of communication. Mm -hmm. Yep, I recognize that. And it's like, um, if, if you talk about the stereotypes, it's, it's very often that you like to prove you matter, like Dayon said. You know, if I if I am like you, you might like me. And um, what often helps if if a, a, another generation comes up, for example, with a word you don't recognize as yours, talk about it. What do you really mean by that? That's interesting. Come for a curiosity of trying to bridge that gap of of a generation as well. Um, from curiosity in, and the showing of willingness you want to understand, uh, I don't think um, it would harm in bridging the gap. It's, it's, it's showing interest, real interest. And if you put yourself above everyone else, you know, oh, this is my language, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, that's not really bridging. <laughs> um, so that's, that's what, what I would suggest. That's, that's, fit in your world too it's a, a, a again i think that you brought two ideas now first the big idea of speaking up as expression not just being a public speaker but expressing yourself which i think is a very nice way to encourage everyone to 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 speak up and the other is when you brought listening because listening it is part of that engagement, that larger engagement of, mm -hmm. of uh, the give and take and, and, and the, the sort of the flow of, of the conversation. Where is a conversation like that, that someone that might be listening on Facebook is joining the conversation in a sort of indirect way or where there's a conversation in a direct manner, the listening becomes a big part of, of a compliment that speaking up, I should imagine. Mm -hmm. For sure, um, uh, in, in my public speaking method, I, I have a whole whole chapter on that. And I always hear two ears, one mouth, use them in proportion. So listen before you open your mouth. That brings a real connection. And particularly in our generation. To keep, to keep connected and understood. Use them in proportion for everybody, but for, if you don't want to become a stereotype, listening is crucial. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And you can feel if someone is really listening or they're just sort of um, cherry picking words and respond um, in a reactive way on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. That's that's so interesting. And I find that is particularly interesting in this world we're living now of communicating on Zoom, where often people are just waiting for their turn to speak mm -hmm. rather than really listening. So they're just waiting for a cue and, and for exactly a keyword <laughs> to yeah. give them the chance to come back and yeah. say the piece. And, and I think that's a very bad habit that yeah. some of us, all of us, I don't know, I can't generalize, but uh, <clears throat> sometimes it happens that we do that. But there's a yeah. bad habit of communication because um, I can see that the other doesn't speak because we don't allow them, but mm -hmm. then we don't speak mm -hmm. as well because we're not even giving ourselves so the space to do it. Why do you speak? Do you want to speak up because then you get confirmation, you get heard? Or do you want to be listened to? That's the difference. Um, I think another cause, I, I call it a, a, a male dog. Uh, um, they unmute yourself, themselves just to pee, just to pee over another message, just to, <laughs> to mark. You, know, you understand them, you, you recognize them. Yeah, they pee everywhere. 
all the time because <laughs> they just want to mark themselves as hey i met her i met her i met her and, and then they speak up but is that to be heard or is it just to mark well i'll never forget um, this metaphor nick <laughs> that will be with me forever <laughs> You recognize them, don't blame them because they're often very insecure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and sometimes in corporate trainings, well, certain white males used to have this kind of marking a lot. Um, I just asked them, do you have a question? What contributes to what's already said before? And if the answer is no, then they shut up anyhow. And if they still keep on marking, the group pressure will come up and they will be corrected because it isn't contributing to what's already mentioned. So that, that helps sometimes. Um, and if you really want to be heard, just, just go back to Zoom and it triggered me something. Um, on Zoom, it takes an extra effort to unmute yourself. And just that extra step um, keeps hiding people in sharing and expressing themselves because they really have to do whatever. In, and then oh, even the box on Zoom lights up because I speak, oh, it's scary. So if you can create a safe environment and I can be quite Dutch direct, the people who know me, know me, and I will just ask, for example, De Jong, Know. Leon, can you share? And then I will just give the floor to her and create a safe space to unmute and share. And, and how was that for, day, for you, Leon? Because I did it quite often and it was not always appropriate for you. And what you said is, well, I'm not ready yet, wasn't it? Yeah. So that gives a space where someone online has a choice to speak up or not and it's just how you frame it how you be with it and how you listen even if you present or if you host on zoom just be aware of what's going on in all those mm -hmm. rooms it requires multitasking but if you are receptive to what's going on the listening is easier and the speaking becomes more natural and authentic as well in my experience wow and I just want to add as well, Tatiana, that I don't believe that it's only on, on platforms like Zoom. This, I don't think we've ever really been taught to listen well, uh, to listen coherently, uh, actively, and without having the answer correct on your, you know, on your lips to, to come back, as you said, Minka, to respond, to react to what the person has said. And, so th I think this is something that, that we all need mm -hmm. to be better versed in. And what we can bring in our generation as an example to the overloaded generations who are so used to multitasking, multi-messaging all the time to say, what do you really hear? Um, I like to hear from you. And then they get, <gasps> individual attention but we we can just provide a space where we want to hear them and to listen to them and then from their mirror back to them and then be together and and bring um that connection and learning from each other further thank you mary jane I recognize that a lot. Thank you. I have to say I'm really pleased. This morning I was planning my undergraduate module and I included a session on listening because I thought it would be a very good skill for them to start picking up at this early stage. Because I agree, we, we, there's always a bit more we can learn about listening. and uh, Always, always, always. And <clears throat> when I... I uh, was diagnosed with a benign brain, brain tumor and I became deaf on one side. Listening is a thing. But th the more deaf I became, the better I could hear between lines. And that's a real benefit of my age. Um, it's a benefit of um, the willingness to, to really hear what's said um, and make this happen. And I, I, 
I wrote on still unpublished books. I uh, have some things to desire. Uh, listening for change. So becoming deaf uh, helped me to listen. And I think that's what we all can do. You, need, you don't need a benign brain tumor for that. Just listen. Thank you. There's also this wonderful expression that, uh, you know, the fact that I don't say anything doesn't mean I don't have to share something, but it does mean that I think that you're not going to hear or understand what I'm going to say. So, yeah, it's, yes, for sure. Yeah. And in, in the live audience, um, the body speaks so loud, I can hardly hear a word you say. Because um, our verbal expression, it's, it's well, let's, let's say the, the real content of words only 10%. Some, some research say even less. So how we communicate with the rest of our being um, helps tremendously or decreases our impact on what we say. And you better have the whole thing aligned because if you if you speak cr crap if you if you want um, no one will listen um, if you have perfect words and perfect body language it's all fine but if you can't hear what you're saying because I'm not expressing me very well, no one will pick me up um, and if if just imagine I can just say whatever it's important you can hear me but I'm just like like this all the time. No one will believe me that I really care. So better be aligned with all three to have the most impact. Yeah. Wonderful. We hear some, some really interesting things. And I love it that uh, Nienke is also at the Wise Moon Society is bringing uh, uh, a program that will help us really dive deeper into uh, all these questions and, and how we can... Uh, uh, well, really speak with our real voice uh, uh, also at any age. And I do believe that is very important. And we do have so much to share, you know, when we become older, there's so much knowledge, so much experience, so much wisdom that we can share. So we have to really find that way to speak with our real voice so that people will listen to what is uh, going on. But on the other hand, I do believe, yes, before we share, it's important that we listen as well uh, before we start talking. Yeah, uh, just a quick round because I'm, I am watching the time. Quick round, uh, Diana, anything that you want to share? Again, it, it was just great to just hear that that again. Um, yeah, we do have lots to, lots to share. And like you said, we've got two ears and one mouth. Um, one of the things that I'm doing at the moment is, is a 30 day listening challenge. And it's, and it has different formats. It's on my, on my phone, it's an app. And um, it just gives this opportunity that, and I'm using this session today. So thank you very much for that because I'm using those skills to just notice and to listen and not always to just jump in and think, oh, you've got to be seen to be heard in this corporate world. So thank you. I really enjoyed that. It was very useful, very interesting. Thank you, Diane. And keep on listening. It's fun. Mm. I've never heard of that, you know, a challenge to learn to listen. I think everyone has to do that challenge. Really great. Yeah, fantastic. Mary Jane, anything that you would like to uh, share? Anything that you want to take out of it or want to add? I think only one thing, and, and uh, Tatiana, it goes back to the, the conversation we had on the live chat with uh, uh, Dorian Danbridge, but it's about context and perspective. And, and Nika, you said it early on, and I'm trying to make that link uh, back to it. But again, what he has found in, in designing learning programs for all age groups is that with the 50 plus age groups, and particularly 60 plus, that there has to be a context, a perspective for them to want to learn. And I think it, just talking about bridging some of the differences, that there is not a, a, a one, um, uh, what's the expression we have in English with, with, uh, um, with the paintbrush doesn't work for everybody. You know, you, you, 
have to know and understand how people will learn. So even in the context of listening, uh, for example, I think this is one tip that I took away from his that I'm hearing somehow back in this conversation. And if we can remember that, then I think we'll be a long way to bridging the differences between the age groups and harnessing the differences. Tatiana, uh, there's an article coming with that title, by the way. And uh, right. yeah, so, you know, it's, it, I think it's a critical aspect that we have to take into account. Yeah. Totally agree. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm muted. Thank you, Mary Jane. Yes. <laughs> De Young, anything that you want to add? Yeah. Uh, again, uh, wonderful session. Um, and I was uh, listening to myself um, uh, using listening skills and what I want to uh, listen. And I think, you know, listening itself is um, very very, very powerful tool. And um, I think I do uh, what I want to listen to from others. So um, thank you again for sharing your wisdom, Yinke. Thank you, Dayong. And um, thank you for bringing up the importance of self-talk because speaking up from within to others, um, needs to be discovered by listening to self first. Mm -hmm. Understand yourself before you, you even, um, yeah. well, it helps you with the consciousness in what you say, understanding yourself first. And that's not always an easy task for no generation, but particularly for our generation who has a lot in, in what happened around a journey, uh, uh, easy to get triggered, easy to, to connect past experience to, oh, that should be now, blah, 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 and then have a just instant going on. Just know, know yourself, it's very important. It's self-talk is crucial to step up for, speak up. Thank you for bringing that up. Wonderful. <clears throat> Tatiana. I would say that for me, uh, we touch very lightly on that, but that was part of the conversation today is this idea of not speaking up, not expressing ourselves can be detrimental to our own health. Mm -hmm. So finding what we want to say and following through is actually a very important health move. So thank yeah. you. Thank you for, yeah. we touched on that lightly, but I thought it would be nice just to, bring that out to the final minutes. So thank you, Nick. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I recognize that a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a whole other session to recognize health problem by not speaking up, but let's, let's schedule another hour for that. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's very, very wise to, um, if you feel blocked, let's, let's wrap it up this way. If you feel blocked somewhere in your body, um, when you don't speak up, you feel it somewhere. Some people in their shoulders, in their throat, in their tummy, in the stomach, whatever. Um, listen to that and start ob observing what's really there. Observing is very important because if you recognize it, you can work with it. So that's all I want to share out of the world now. It's a whole session, but it's important and it's particularly for our generation mm -hmm. because to reverse it, sometimes it takes a bit longer. So start today. Thank you. There's so much wisdom shared today. And I didn't even have time, Nienke, to, to share what is being said in the comments on Facebook because we had quite, we had quite some viewers there. Uh, and I see that, um, for instance, Deborah, she has been, uh, she's in the comments, Renee from the Burgers in the comments. Um, there's um, Francis uh, who has been uh, watching us and uh, so please take time also to uh, to watch the questions uh, there. Yeah. Because there's, uh, I will respond to them if yeah, there's, there's the questions are uh, and so if they're still coming up you see this or you see later um, and, and just tag me and then uh, it's easier for me to find the messages but I would love to respond because with the curiosity together we can bridge everything. 
Yes, great, yeah, yeah. And one of the things that uh, Rene uh, mentioned in the end was um, we, we have this Dutch verb that says, uh, speaking is silver, listening is gold. You know, that's, that is something that we really need to work on. For now, it's really exciting. You know, there are still so many things that we have not discussed. So, uh, you know, we leave that up to what is going on on the Wise Moon Society. And, you know, if you feel like this is a discussion or a conversation that you feel like, oh, wow, there's a lot going on, join us on the Wise Moon Society, join Ninka's program, because that's of, uh, of great value for those who, uh, who are in our age group and, and really still need to, to contribute or want to contribute um, in the, the next stage of their life. So thank you all. Uh, for next week, that will be International Women's Day. And we decided there's already so much going on online. We're not going to add to that. So we have a week off and we will be back um, the week after the 15th, uh, Robert Fossil will share a lot about networking and making new friends online. So that will be the 15th. And what I just also want to, to add, um, April will be an important month for us because we're organizing a summit on the 5th, the 7th and the 12th of April, just two hours per day. So it's not going to be three hours uh, summit. That will be very interesting. More information will be shared and registration open this week. So love to see you there as well. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Nienke. And um, well, again, hope to see you soon. Keep speaking up. All together. Thank you for having me. Till soon. You. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.